Hey y'all, you are tuned in to the Powerhouse Lash Podcast. This podcast is my diary to the lash community where I share my highs, lows, lessons, and rants based on my lash journey. My heart is to share the reality of what it's really like to build a lash business, and I hope this episode helps you feel seen, validated, educated, humored, and makes your lash journey a little bit easier. I'm your host, T The Brand, and I'm glad that you're here. Now, let's get to it. Hey y'all, I'm T The Brand. Welcome to another episode of the Powerhouse Slash Podcast. If this is your first time tuning into an episode, thank you for being here. I hope that you learn something and love it here. So in this episode, I'm going to be sharing about one of my favorite topics to educate on because it is one of the biggest struggles that we have in the lash industry as beginners and sometimes as we have, you know, been on our lash journeys for a little bit and that is lash retention. Lash retention is um, you can define it as how long an extension stays attached to a natural lash. So if your extension stays attached to your client's natural lashes for the weeks in between when they come back to get fills, then that means that you have a great retention. If your extensions do not stay attached to your client's lashes well or long enough, that means you have poor retention. So retention just means how long the extension is staying attached to the natural lash if it is shedding off with the natural lash or if it is prematurely coming off um, in between fields and such. So there are a few things that go into um, maximizing your attention. And one of the main things that everybody gets in a frenzy about is their adhesive. I know a lot of lash artists who um, I've worked with who have experienced bad retention and they think it's their glue. So they buy, go out and buy another glue. And when that glue isn't doing what they need to do, they go buy another glue and try another brand. And before you know it, you have a collection of open adhesives that you really probably could be using, but you don't know how to use. So I hope that um, this insight will help you increase your client retention, your client lash retention. So um, along, since we're talking about adhesive, we're just going to go ahead and kill this bird. Um, A few things go into adhesive. One being the humidity. Every package of adhesive, every bottle of adhesive has um, a little indicator on it that talks about humidity. It tells you what the humidity in the room needs to be in order to have the glue function at its um at its best. Excuse me. So if the glue has a humidity rate of I'm gonna just make something up 65 to 70 percent um then not 70%, um, 70 degrees, 65 to 70 degrees, um, then you would need your room that you are lashing in to be that temperature in order for, or in between that temperature range so that your glue can work effectively. And again, each glue is different. So it would be on the packaging that your glue bottle comes in. So you want to pay attention to that. If you don't know what your um, humidity in your room is, then a hygrometer, I believe I said that right, a hygrometer is the best tool. Um, it's a little bitty like square tool that you can clip on to your lash cart um, or a table or something so that you can see what the humidity is in your room. And if the humidity is too high, um, something that might help with that is having like a small space heater to kind of, you know, dry the air out a little bit so that it'll, um, your adhesive will work. And then if the humidity is too low, then, um, things like a humidifier that'll, you know, kind of get some moisture into the air that will help balance out your humidity so that your adhesive can work in your room. So that's one thing about adhesive. Another thing to consider with adhesive is the dry time. And I know a lot of times we may think, okay, the dry we need the lashes to dry faster, but that dry time really depends on how fast you lash. So say if you're doing a set and you um, put some adhesive on your lash extension and you go to apply it, well, you have to go in and isolate um, and then make sure that you're getting it placed on there the right way. If you are a slower lasher, meaning like you just started or you just haven't been able to get your time down that's okay it's normal it'll happen there is no um, quick fix to that you just got to keep practicing keep working and get better and eventually you'll get faster that's just that on that there's no cheat code to getting faster at lashing um so 
if you if if your glue is drying fast but your lash is slow then by the time you get your extension on the natural lash the adhesive is probably already or mostly dried and therefore it's not going to last long because it didn't have enough time to bond to the natural lash so making sure that you're trying to adhesive that kind of matches your lash speed um i'm a pretty fast lasher but the my favorite adhesive is from the lash supply.com it's their magic all seasons adhesive um and if you shop the lash supply.com use code t10 you get 10 percent off all orders and free shipping on orders 100 100- 100% $100 or more it used to be free shipping on all orders but they changed the game on us so you got to spend $100 to get the free shipping um but you still get 10% off if you use code t10 and that's t-e-e-1-0 um so the that's my favorite adhesive to use from the lash supply.com and it is a I think one to 1.5 second dry time and that just gives me enough time to get my adhesive on the glue as I explained earlier get my adhesive on the extension um get the natural lashes isolated and get the extension on there and we good so uh making sure that you are very aware of your dry time your lash speed uh, and making sure that it aligns with the dry time of the adhesive that you're using that can play with your retention as well another thing about adhesive is viscosity i know we might see that and may not be 100 percent sure what that means that just talks about um basically the fluidity of the glue so viscosity is how thick or how thin the glue is so if a um bottle of glue has a low viscosity and again this comes on any adhesive that you get and if it ain't on there then don't buy from them um but the viscosity is it's a, a, a adhesive has a low viscosity if it's runny like water so if it just runs out really liquidy really fluid then yes it has a low viscosity and it would be considered a higher viscosity um if it comes out like honey or molasses something slow it's thicker so it moves a little slower than it would if it had a watery texture and so um adhesives has viscosity in between water and um what did I say? Water and honey as a comparison. So knowing which um, type of glue viscosity works best for you, knowing which kind of glue viscosity that you like, that will help with your retention as well. And it'll also help you pick better adhesives. Um, and then another thing about adhesive, making sure that you're remembering your expiration dates. Some glue you can have um, open for up to, let's say, two weeks. Some glue you may have for maybe a month or two that it can go open. Every package of glue has its shelf life on it. So when you open a new bottle of glue take a piece of your lash tape put it around the bottle or maybe on the bottom of the bottle that's probably the better option putting it on the put a piece of tape on the bottom of the bottle and put the date that you need to change that glue so if you open it today um let's say today is what is today january 24th and you have two months to use it okay about march 24th then you know i need to get rid of this glue so you would write march 24th um on the bottom of the glue with the tape on the tape on the bottom of the glue so that you know okay march 24th i need to change this glue out um another way to tell if you need to change your glue if the glue when you start dispensing it it gets like gooey and kind of stringy when you're pulling your extensions out of it you know that that glue is trash and you can go ahead and toss it and get another one but before you do that make sure you've shaken your glue up very well um so that all of the ingredients are mixed and you're not just like wasting glue because you didn't shake it up good enough and then the last thing i'm going to share about adhesive is using enough adhesive so a lot of times when we go to um lash school when we go to to certain trainers it was school for me school told me not to use a lot of adhesive and I don't use a lot of adhesive but I make sure that I have enough adhesive on the extension so that it can actually bond to the natural lash and stick and stay so um for example <laughs> when schools are teaching classic lashes they want you to have like this thin layer of glue well that makes classic lashes pop off that's not gonna they're not gonna hold long because there's not an adhe- enough adhesive for it to really attach and bond to that natural lash so one tip that i always give lash artists is try to make sure you see like at least two three little small beads on your classic lash um and especially one at the bottom the base because you want to make sure that the base is um, connected we'll get more into that in a minute but uh, making sure that you're using enough adhesive so that the lashes can act- actually stick that all plays a part in your retention so that's my whole little spiel about lash adhesive moving on to lash placement which plays a part in retention 
So as we know, there are really kind of four ways to place lashes. You can place on the side, the top, the bottom, or you can wrap lashes. Um, I prefer side placement because I can easily see that the lash is lined up where it needs to be. It's low enough or close enough to the lash line. Um, or if it's too close to the lash line, I'm e it's easier to see for me. Also with side placement, I'm able to just line the extension up with the natural lash and just stick it over to the side and I'm able to see that both the base and the stem of the extension are attached to the natural lash. Sometimes with top and bottom placement, only either the stem or the base of the extension is attached to that natural lash, which means when your client goes to brush their lashes, those extensions are going to come off if it's not holding on to both the base and the stem. Or if only the base is attached and the rest of the extension is lifted off the natural lash. Or if the stem is just attached and then you got um, the base lifted up and then the rest of the lash lifted up from only that like piece of the stem being attached. So making sure that if you do um, apply on the side, on the bottom... I mean, not on the side, on the top or on the bottom, just make sure that you are double, tr maybe triple checking that your extensions are um, all the way on and that the base and stem are both connected. Again, side placement helps you be able to see that really easily. Um, I also like side placement because it makes the removal process a lot easier. So yeah, um, when I'm removing outgrown lashes, of course not doing like a full removal with like a, a removal gel or something. So making sure that your placement is on point and that your lashes are placed properly. And again, I cannot stress enough that the base and stem are connected to the natural lash. Um, that'll help you improve your retention. And then lash anatomy. This is the one that not a lot of people think about when it comes to retention, but it is like a huge factor in your retention. If you are lashing mostly telogen lashes, those lashes, as we know, are about to shed. So if you're putting all of their extensions on lashes that are about to shed anywhere between now and who knows when, then when your client's lashes come off, they're thinking, oh, they didn't last. But what was actually happening was you just lashed a bunch of lashes that were at the end of their lash cycle and they came off. So making sure that you are aiming for catagens and antigens. Now, I know that lash and antigens can be really scary. And if you went to school, they told you to leave them alone, probably. Listen. Um, one thing that I have learned in school and through experience is that you can lash antigens, but you don't need to lash the lashes that are super small and barely black. So if you got a lash that you can barely see the color and the pigmentation in, or if it's just super short, a, an extension is going to weigh that down. So of course you want to leave that alone, but you have to use better judgment, common sense, your lash integrity to know, hey, this is an antigen, but it's well pigmented. If I think that this 14 millimeter is going to be too heavy I can drop the you know the length down to help with the weight of the lash so or I can just make smaller fans to help with the weight of the lash but do not neglect antigens as they help make up your set and help your lashes last longer antigens and catagens are what you want to aim for and I'm not saying totally avoid telogens I mean you will have to lash telogens you can lash telogens but you just also have to be aware that those lashes are going to either grow out way faster than the rest or they're going to shed off and be antigens by the time your client comes back so definitely considering lash anatomy when you are working um, on improving your attention and then let's talk about primer <laughs> okay so lash primer is it's basically uh, up to you as an artist I don't personally use primer I used to use primer but I stopped doing primer when I started offering complimentary lash baths with all of my services um, I just prefer to work on a clean surface and although primer removes oil or whatever that might be in the um natural lashes i just feel like lash baths are a bit more thorough um and i can just get more like real cleaning done so um if you do use a primer things to consider for your retention are if the primer is water-based or alcohol-based. Alcohol-based primers they are going to dry your lashes out now um you don't ever want to do a lash bath and a primer. I mean, it's not going to kill you, but it's probably going to kill your retention. So the reason being, when you do a lash bath, you're cleaning everything off. And then when you go in with a primer, you're stripping even more um, of the moisture out of the lashes. So the water that you're using to rinse during the lash bath, that still restores moisture. And remember, moisture is important. We're working with humidity with our um, adhesive. So you don't want to have bone dry stripped 
you know, lash natural lashes because then the extensions aren't going to hold well to those. And alcohol based primers can do that. So you want to be careful. I encourage you to use a water based primer. Um, the one company that I know that has a water based primer, I have never used it again because I don't use lash primer. Um, but it is Lash Invasion. Um, look her up on Instagram. And if you're a primer girl, then shop her primer um it is a water-based primer so it won't be stripping your client's natural lashes um while we're on the roll of primer let's talk about bonder bonder um i've been seeing <laughs> oh jesus i've been seeing some stuff where um artists are using bonder as a primer or they're priming lashes and then putting bonder on and thinking that's helping their retention when it's not because bonder is to cure adhesive and if you put bonder on a natural lash and then put the natural lash i mean then put an extension with adhesive on that natural lash that's not going to make it bond because the bonder is meant to go on top of the adhesive to seal it dry it cure it all the things so that your clients don't have um, red eyes or burning eyes from fumes once you get done with their lashes if they're not dry all the way by chance um, and it goes ahead and it helps with your retention because again it's curing that glue immediately um, once you apply it and dry it so that your clients don't have to wait that 24 hours before they can expose their eyes to water or take a hot shower or whatever so it's just a protective and and extra protective layer um for your your client's lashes and their retention but don't use the bonder before you put the lashes on put the extensions on get you a micro swab apply the bonder to only the excuse me to only the base of the lash in the who oh, jesus Sorry, y'all. Um, apply it to only the bond of the natural lash and the extension. That way it can cure that glue and go on about what it's going to do. So those are uh, my tips for um, increasing your client retention, making sure that you know all things about the adhesive that you're using and that you're using it correctly, making sure that you're uh, placing your lashes in a way that um, won't compromise the integrity of your client's lash retention considering lash anatomy using primer water-based primer preferably um giving lash baths and not lash baths and primer and using a bonder should should you so choose um two bonders that i really like um uh, my first pick is bonder from the lash supply.com um i've been using their bonder for about two months now and i love it and then my second pick would be the climax bonder from live bay and that's l-i-v-b-a-y look them up on instagram as well as well as the lash supply official um and yeah take your pick bonder is amazing and that's just that on that. So I hope that this um, episode was helpful. I hope that you have better lash retention after listening to it. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the review section or send me a DM on Instagram at Powerhouse Lashes by TTB. Um, and I will see y'all in the next episode.